Hey, it's me. You know, a lot of us, including myself, have some basic attitudes or mindsets that I feel aren't quite optimal, whether psychologically or spiritually. When you start on a path of self-improvement or self-discovery, one of the first things that needs to happen is a change in your life, right? The tricky part is you might not even realize that your attitude is off in some fundamental way. But because you sincerely want to grow and better yourself, whether you call it self-development, self-recognition, or purification, you start to receive guidance. This can come partly from guardian spirits, or however you like to think of them, and partly from your own higher self, which is trying to point out this wrong attitude to you. This doesn't just apply to people who are new to this journey. Even those who have been on this path for a long time, who are genuinely seeking truth and are open in many ways, can still be blind in one or two areas of their inner selves. Even people who have discovered many truths and are advanced in some ways can have a blind spot, a stubborn resistance to facing their own inner and outer dilemmas. It's funny, we often notice our external conflicts, but as you probably know, those outer conflicts are just a reflection of what's going on inside us. Yet so often people have the wrong approach or take the wrong approach. In a subtle way, they think that if they're trying to improve in a certain way, their external problems will eventually go away on their own. They expect things to change according to their own ideas, the preconceived notions they formed because of this basic wrong attitude. So they end up overlooking the simple fact that they need to change their ideas first, their mindset, before their frustrating circumstances have a chance to change it eventually becomes a vicious cycle. You're waiting for your conditions to change while your conditions are waiting for you to change your ideas, your mindset. Okay, so this isn't just for those who are starting on this path. Maybe even more so for those who've been on it for a while and have been sincere in their efforts. You see, we need to try hard not to avoid the real issue but we often keep doing just that. Okay, so take a moment to sit down quietly and calmly. Think about your worries and conflicts. Yeah, there might be many. It could be problems in relationships, finances, work, love life, etc. You know, it could be something else entirely. But whatever the problem is, be aware that it's directly connected to a wrong attitude or a less than optimal mindset inside you. Pray or ask for recognition, guidance, and enlightenment in this area. If you search in this direction and are truly open to finding your specific answer, to seeing the connection between your outer problem and your inner state, guidance will come to you. Often, the guidance is already there, but we refuse to see it. We ignore the signs that are constantly being given to us. We keep turning away from the particular issue we need to face. We search in other directions, make excuses for ourselves, and try to tell ourselves that our outer problem has other other causes. Now, just being on this path doesn't guarantee that you're not escaping from something. Okay, you know, anything can be an escape, even religion, even this very path we're talking about. So for example, if you take teachings and interpret them in a way that suits your own self-deception, then the path becomes an escape. If you're blind to the parts of the teachings that could really open your eyes, if there's something inside you that resists hearing the truth, then you might focus on things that sure are true and beautiful, but maybe they're less important for your specific situation. And in that context, these teachings become an escape. So don't think that just by being on this path, following some advice, reading books, or meditating and praying every day, you automatically have a guarantee that you're facing yourself or not avoiding unresolved issues inside you. Everything you do 
is always accompanied by the question of how you do it. Everything you do is always accompanied by the question of how you do it. The fact that you're doing something isn't enough. It won't guarantee that it'll lead you out of your own darkness. So it entirely depends on how you approach this path and what you're willing to face. What you often avoid facing isn't necessarily something deeply buried in your subconscious. Often it's right under your nose. It's so obvious, so simple that you don't want to see it. We often look for answers that are far away. We strive for things that might be much harder to find and we ignore what's right in front of us. It's true that many people who aren't very spiritually advanced, so to speak, seem to get away with a lot. Once you reach a certain level of spiritual development, even if you manage to escape some of your inner conflicts, you have to face stronger repercussions if you keep stubbornly avoiding things. So you might not be able to get away with a lot of things like others, so to speak. This is actually a good sign for you, though. It can confirm where you stand and indicate that there's something wrong with how you're working spiritually that you haven't seen yet. So if you keep this possibility in mind, as you struggle with yourself and overcome your resistance by recognizing it and asking for help, then the realization will come. It has to come all the outer signs that point to the solution will suddenly start making clear sense to you. The answer will become logical and form a complete picture. That wrong attitude or less than optimal mindset, which you expected to change somehow from the outside, according to your own ideas, will actually start to change from the inside because you've made an inner change. As a result, you'll act differently in other situations. Once you discover this, you'll see that your free will is very powerful. And at the same time, your free will alone, without the help of God, or however you understand the higher power, and the guidance provided when you choose your proper attitude, is not enough. That realization will come to you, but you have to allow it by making a change in yourself. Now you might be wondering, how do I begin? Honestly, it's not as hard as it might seem. Try to simplify your ideas and start with one problem in the simplest terms. Keep it straightforward, don't complicate it. Whatever outer problem you have, try to connect it with your various faults or shortcomings. Now at first this might seem impossible and completely unrelated, But I assure you, it's not. It never is. Usually, it's not just one fault that's responsible. Because faults are often connected to each other, they interact. There's a whole cluster of them. If you can connect these various shortcomings with your problem, you're halfway there. If you don't clearly see the connection yet, if you sense or feel something, you can't quite make it out, pray. Ask sincerely and openly for this realization, or bring it to our community. The answer is very close. It's right there. Whoever is really open and truly wants to find an answer setting aside all resistance must receive it, no matter what. Every one of us has something we're not quite satisfied with in our lives maybe an unfulfilled desire or some problem, big or small. Take your faults and consider them. Think about them deeply. What could be directly or indirectly responsible for your problem? Then go a step further. You know that each fault is a violation of some spiritual law or principle. So consider discussing a fault with a trusted friend or mentor and explore which spiritual law is being broken by this fault. This can then guide you in how to meditate on it and handle it. Okay, You can make further connections by meditating on how violating the spiritual law through your fault is responsible for your immediate problem. I can promise you results if you approach it this way. Then this path won't be just another form of escape. It'll be reality 
as it should be. And it'll bring you to the most important thing that life is about. Facing yourself. Finding your true self. From there, try to observe your own reaction when you do this. When you look at those faults, how they're connected to the problem and the spiritual law has been violated. Observe your reaction to looking at all of this from a little distance and with a bit of detachment. Because this could be interesting because it gives you clues about the conflicting currents in your own soul. Think about it. There's one part of you that truly wants to grow and is willing to give up the comfort of self-deception. And at the same time, there's another part that fights hard against it. If you can look at these conflicting parts of yourself like an uninvolved observer, even just for a moment, then you'll understand what's going on inside you and how much these resisting parts are responsible for your trials and tribulations in life. Okay, so don't assume that just because you have good intentions on the surface, these resisting parts aren't significant. They need to be acknowledged as a powerful opponent. You have to face that part of yourself too, not just the fault itself. We need to realize there's a side of ourselves that doesn't want the other side, doesn't want what the other side wants. Okay, and recognizing this inner conflict is the most important factor of all. Up until now, you might have rationalized this conflicting or fighting part. You may have been so affected by this negative side that the positive side, the one that wants the right and wise thing, was overpowered. You rationalize this defeat with all sorts of other explanations. And then even the most intelligent and wise among us become blind and unintelligent in this one area because of avoidance. Avoidance is blindness, and blindness is the opposite of light or enlightenment. Now, there's three major parts of the self to deal with on this path of purification. We've talked about them before. The conscious mind, the unconscious, and the subconscious. Now, the last two aren't the same. Okay, we need to be clear about that. The unconscious is what could become conscious if you choose to look in the right direction. You're simply unaware of it because your inner gaze is pointed elsewhere. But the moment you change your focus, it becomes conscious. It's very much there and very much on the surface. So when you begin on this path, you first deal with the conscious mind. In previous talks, we looked at that like the various tasks and advice on how to approach the conscious mind, how to formulate simply and clearly what's already conscious. Now, before you delve into the subconscious, you have to meet the unconscious first. And that's exactly what we've been talking about today. Only after you've worked through some of these issues should you consider going into the subconscious layers that are important for you to become aware. Okay? Okay. Conscious first, unconscious second, subconscious third. There may be many images or patterns formed during your early years that affect your life right now. We know this. Some of these you might have brought with you even from previous experiences or lifetimes, if you believe in that. Because they exist in your soul, incidents have occurred in your life that brought them to the surface. In the right kind of spiritual progress, everything that pertains to your growth will come into your awareness at the proper time and in the proper way. Okay, so the lines between these three areas, conscious, unconscious, and subconscious, aren't clearly defined, but for our understanding, we'll keep them separate. Okay, for our purposes. Here's what I'm proposing. If you listened to the previous messages and completed the work concerning the first conscious layer, look now at the unconscious, the part you're unaware of, but that's right in front of you. Take your immediate hardships or problems and approach them in this way, in the way that I just described. Now, before we finish up, I just want to mention three main faults in human character. 
because these are the ones, these are the ones that you want to look for. Self-will, pride, and fear. Self-will, pride, and fear. Okay? You might not think of fear as a fault, but I'm telling you, it is. If someone were faultless, they would be unafraid. You know the opposite of fear is love, but knowing that isn't enough to understand why fear is a fault. Okay, so first, let's understand that these three main faults are connected. They're very much intertwined. It would be hard to have one or two of these faults without the third. But it's possible that out of the three, one or two might be unconscious, while the third is quite obvious, even to yourself. So what I propose is keeping a daily review and check your reactions to everything you felt during the day, even in response to seemingly unimportant incidents. If you try to clearly describe an unpleasant inner reaction you had, you'll often conclude that there's an element of fear involved. Fear that others won't do what you want or won't react the way you'd like. In other words, if there's strong self-will, there's automatically fear that the self-will won't be satisfied or that your pride might be hurt. If you had no pride, you wouldn't fear it being hurt. If you had no self-will, you wouldn't fear it not being satisfied. So hopefully you can see the connection. These subtle, smoldering fears are much more frequent and more harmful than the obvious pronounced fears are. If you start checking your various impressions and reactions from the day, you can see where fear comes in and whether it's connected with self-will and pride and to what extent. So begin to observe these inner reactions and analyze them in these terms without trying to change yourself immediately. Feelings can't be changed by sheer willpower. Remember, they will change if you first learn to observe them. Get a little distance from yourself and see the underlying workings of your reactions and the behavior of your inner currents. Just by doing this consistently for some time, these strong reactions, desires, and pressures will eventually become weaker. Maybe they won't stop right away, but they'll weaken and happen less often. And eventually, if you continue this along with focused prayer or meditation, they will change and leave you feeling liberated. Anyway, that's what I got for you today. I love you. Let's connect soon.